Throughout his lifetime, George Washington had many jobs. He was a soldier, a surveyor, and a politician. But did you know that farming was actually George's favorite job? We can learn a lot about his life as a farmer here at George's home, Mount Vernon, and by reading his letters. Between the Revolutionary War and being our first president, he was overjoyed to be back home taking care of his animals. He certainly had a lot of them. Sheep, mules, pigs, and black cattle, what he called cows and oxen. It is wonderful to see how soon the ravages of war are repaired. Houses are rebuilt, fields enclosed, stocks of cattle which were destroyed are replaced, and many a desolated territory assumes again the cheerful appearance of cultivation. Cattle were actually a lot of different colors, white, brown, or red like these rare milking Devon cows. Some even had names like Darling or Bempo. They gave George butter, milk, meat, and helped work the fields, which was not easy. At the river farm, Mr. Stewart has got about half of his wheat and complains very much for the want of carts to get in his wheat as he only has three and only two oxen to shift with, and has a very heavy harvest to get in, and he almost despairs of ever getting it in. His oxen are very much worked. Ooh, close one, almost stepped in cow poop. We might think that cow poop or manure is kind of gross today, but to George it was like gold because it fertilized his crops. He had 8,000 acres. Can you imagine how much manure it would take to cover 8,000 acres? In fact, when he was hiring a new farmer from England, he needed someone who understood the importance of manure. When I speak of a knowing farmer, I mean one who understands the best course of crops, how to plow, to sow, to mow, to hedge, to ditch, and above all, Midas-like, one who can convert everything he touches into manure as the first transmutation towards gold. George was certainly a knowing farmer himself, he wanted to know every detail that happened on his farms, so he had his overseers write weekly reports. George had to be quite firm with them because managing cattle was a difficult job. Looking over the other reports and finding thereby the small number of calves I have leads me to apprehend that there is some defect in the management of this part of my stock. For it is inconceivable that out of 300 head of cattle I should have but about 30 calves. It was very important to George that his farm was always improving. He knew that old ways aren't always better and he wasn't afraid to experiment. And there were plenty of people to experiment with him, like the famous British agriculturalist Arthur Young. He once sent George a plow to try out. If the ground designed for fallowing, for wheat in the autumn, is more than can be prepared well, the quantity should be reduced, as it is a folly to do things by halves. But before it is given up, oxen and everything should be attempted in the plow to accomplish it. In fixing Young's plow, go exactly by the directions he gives. And Young wasn't the only one interested in helping George with his cattle. I have sent you a small quantity of the great long-sided Scots cabbage seed. These cabbages are intended chiefly for the feed of cattle in the winter season, when all kinds of green food are become scarce. And if the climate should suit them, as I hope it may, I am satisfied great advantages may be derived from the culture of them. George had a lot of animals, to say the least. Over a thousand across his five farms. But can you guess which one was his favorite? We'll just have to find out next time.